Welcome back to our interview questions series. The last time I posted this video, I got a comment from someone who said that they would have appreciated if I could tackle much more difficult interview questions. I took time to go online to try and figure out what kind of questions would be a bit challenging or difficult to help someone prepare for an interview. The challenge that I encountered was that most of the questions that are on the difficult side seem to be specific. Like asking you about BGP and the specific details about BGP or asking you about OSPF and the specific details about OSPF. The challenge with such questions is the fact that they touch on one subject matter of which if you are not familiar with OSPF, then the answer would not necessarily help you. Or if you're not familiar with BGP, what I might explain about the protocol might not make much sense. So I looked around to try and figure out what kind of question can I pick that could help anyone uh, prepare for an interview in the event that they come across a similar question. I stumbled across this one website and I feel that I found a question that could probably relate to most of you, regardless of which certification you're working on. I'll put a link in the description below of the website where I got this question. And the reason why I chose this question was this person was faced with a scenario where they wanted to interview people. They didn't want to go through the, the phase of asking you know, generic questions but they chose to ask a practical question. And in that practical question, they were hoping to probe the person's mind in order to gather what knowledge they knew, what they understood, and how best they could probably be able to explain and communicate that information. And it is on that premise that I've picked their question as the focal point of today's video. So without wasting much time, let's begin. You walk into an interview, and the first question they ask you is, draw a diagram of a network that you've worked on and explain it. Now, if you have followed the series, there are two focal points when we answer in questions. The first one is, what is the person who's interviewing you wanting to establish by that question? So that's the first element. The second element is, how best can you answer that question? If I were the one asked that question, how best would I answer it? So the three things that I feel that the interviewer is wanting to find out from you is how does your diagram look, right? How does your diagram look? That's number one. Number two, how did you start drawing your diagram? It's very important where you start from. And the third component is how well did you explain the diagram? Right, so these are the three criteria that you're probably being assessed for in this particular question. So let's get into the question and let's see how I would answer the question. I put a diagram on the screen and this is the diagram that I would have personally drawn. I would start my diagram from a layer one perspective. I will then bring it onto my access switches. I'll go into the core switch. In this scenario, we're looking at a collapsed core. If you don't know what a collapsed core is, it's basically just not following the three-tier system that is the standard in most uh, network designs, but bypassing the distribution layer and just connecting straight to your core switch. From the core switch, I go to the one router. I emphasize and put a highlight that there is a firewall along the way, depending on which technology you're using, MPLS or VPN, to connect to your head office or data center. And in that particular network diagram, the, the whole interview can actually focus on that and conclude on that. Why? Because there are so many questions that can basically be asked and there are so many things that can be explained. I would want you to take a phased approach because there are so many concepts that you can talk about. And if you're not careful, you might confuse the person who's interviewing you and you might confuse yourself. So you need a strategy on how best to approach the explanation. In my diagram, I have circled out areas that I would focus on. So the first area 
is you're looking at your local area network, right? That's your internal network. And in that internal network, you notice that I've put three key points. The first one is VSS, right? VSS is the technology that you use to create redundancy on a campus network. Without going too technical, you can basically articulate the fact that you implement VSS on your core switches to allow for failover in the event that one of them was to go down, the secondary uh, switch will basically continue forwarding traffic. You will notice that between my access layer switches and the core switch, I have put a circle. For those that are not aware, that circle signifies something known as a port channel. Now, what is a port channel? A port channel is basically binding of multiple interfaces to create redundancy. So in this scenario, I have basically showcased that I've got two interfaces that are connecting between the core switch and the access layer switch, and I've bundled them into a port channel using either LACP or PAGP. LACP would be in a scenario where your infrastructure does not belong to one vendor, right? So if you've got a combination of a Juniper switch and a Cisco switch on one end, you can basically run LACP to be able to create a port channel between the two of them. Being able to highlight VSS and being able to highlight port channel basically shows someone that you have an understanding of how redundancy works on a network. Remember, you are being interviewed and they are trying to establish the knowledge that you have. So your ability to be able to confidently talk about these things without necessarily going too much into detail basically makes them analyze and assess where your knowledge basically sits in, 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 in the scope of the assessment. So we've spoken about port channels. We've spoken about VSS. I think I highlighted VLANs. That's a conversation all by itself. You can basically start talking about the VLANs that you have in your organization. Maybe you've got a VLAN for data. You have a VLAN for voice. You have a VLAN for video traffic. you got a VLAN for wireless traffic. And you do have certain sects of the network that you need to be able to segment. And you've got specific VLANs for those. Talking about these three technologies allows the person on the other end to then ask follow-up questions. And in them asking follow-up questions, it gives you an opportunity to be able to respond. And in you responding, you are able to demonstrate that you do have an understanding of your network. Right, so the second component that I, I probably then highlighted is the connection between the core switch and the one router on the branch side. Two technologies that I'll probably explain in that part is what routing protocol are you running? If you're running layer three, you have the opportunity of being able to talk about the protocols that you basically dealt with. In my case, I think I've highlighted EIGRP. So you can talk about EIGRP. Also, what is important is redistribution. How you are getting routes that are coming from your DC and how you're advertising your local routes to your DC. So redistribution is basically just the advertising of routes into another protocol. But I am guess you're starting to get a picture of how best you can be able to approach such a question. And the approach that you basically bring is going to give the person sitting across the table an understanding of your technical knowledge. Earlier on, I mentioned that how you draw the diagram is going to be crucial. I've always emphasized that whilst technical skills are important, what is also important that we don't put much consideration in is our communication skills. And in this question, what you're being asked is, can you take the knowledge of your network that you have and can you communicate it to someone who has no idea about that infrastructure in a way that they can be able to understand? And the recommendation and advice that I basically give is, if you cannot explain it to someone who's not technical, or what other people say in, in books that if you cannot explain it to a three-year-old, then you really don't understand it. So your diagram must be clear enough to be able to explain or for someone to have a visual of your network. Remember, you're trying to get someone to come into your network and visualize. 
what your network looks like. If you are going to prepare for an interview based on this question, learn to practice how to draw your network diagram. It doesn't have to be detailed, but it must be high level enough for someone to be able to look at it and be able to make sense on what are the contents of that network diagram. Another key important is where do you start? Now, unfortunately, you probably could not see me drawing this diagram, but I started from my access layer switches because I'm building in my mind where my network starts. I'm starting with the campus layer, and then from the campus layer, I move on to the one interface. And from the one interfaces and the one side of the network, I then move on to the two data centers until I get to the internet. So where you start is not 100% the determining factor of your success or your failure, but it will say a lot about how much time you spent in the industry and how best are you then able to explain it. I, I, I trust and hope that this basically makes sense and this can basically help you as you make your preparation for your interview. I did not want to find a question that was specific and ask you about BGP because at the end of the day, it's not valuable. But if you could practice with this question, if you could draw a network diagram from start to finish and be comfortable to explain the different technologies that are implemented or used on the different parts of your network, then you will be ready to face any interview. Now, the second part of such a question is defending the things that you've highlighted. Because I've spoken about VSS, I'm now giving the other person the opportunity to ask me about, v about VSS on what it is, how it works, how much have I configured VSS and how much do I know about how it works. So you need to be able to be ready to defend, not defend, but explain or answer any follow-up questions that emanate from the technologies that you've basically highlighted. So in this case, I probably would ask you, oh, you spoke about EIGRP. What's the administrative distance for EIGRP? You, you see where it's going? Now someone is probing me questions or I'm asking you questions and you can be able to answer. So you tell me, oh, the AD for EIGRP is 90. That starts building the confidence that I would have in you as a person as you give me feedback to the questions that I'm basically asking. I trust that you'll be able to find value in this video. And I hope that it will help you as you prepare uh, towards your interview. I like such questions myself because they allow you to flourish as a person. These open-ended questions allow you the opportunity to showcase yourself. I know for some, this might have hit you in the face because you're thinking to yourself, Tanae, I've never worked on a network before. I don't know how to answer. And this question basically threw me off my feet. I wish I had a simple answer for you, but I don't. One of two things. The first one is you need to be able to articulate the experience that you've acquired in your work experience. In events that you do not have that experience, you could take the same concept but explain it from a lab that you've basically created. No one is asking for the physical side of what you've dealt with. Yes, that's the most preferable. But if you could explain your own lab that you've built at home in GNS3 or whichever virtual environment that you're basically using in the same manner, you are able to then demonstrate to the person who's interviewing you on what you know and what you're confident about. Remember, this the objective of these videos is to be able to probe your readiness as you go for interviews and be able to give you different dimensions that you're likely going to encounter when you get into an interview, but at the same time, preparing you in the best way possible that you're able to answer. So what I've just highlighted is just one side of how I would approach this question in a normal interview or in a formal interview and how best I would explain it in a structured way and ensure that I'm ready for any follow-up questions that basically come from there. So pick a technology, be confident with it, 
and in such a scenario, explain that technology and be ready for any questions that might come out. And do not be afraid to be able to be honest when you're not sure of a particular technology or if you're not aware. They're not looking for you to know all the answers. All they need to know is how much do you know? How deep do you know? How comfortable about the knowledge that you know? And how honest are you with what it is that you don't know? I wanna thank you for making it this far. I know it might've been a long video, but I felt like this is the question that most people are likely gonna encounter. And there is no right or wrong answer, but your assessment is gonna be based on how you react, respond, and how confident are you in being able to answer this question. And to the user who made this request, I hope this is a tough enough question. And if you feel that this is not enough and you got much more difficult questions that you want me to address, please uh, feel free, leave a comment below, point me to the website where you found difficult questions or if, or to make it much more simpler, just put your question in the comments below. I hope you found value in this video. I want to thank you for viewing and I'll see you in the next one.